Okie dokie. I'm back with another grand experiment. I guess I'm really saying I love those. <clears throat> Today we're going to do another riff on maple leaf and see where we go with that. I am using some blues and some orangey. I didn't get out of red, did I? Maybe I did. Fuchsia. Yeah, I did. Um, I really want a pinky. Never mind. Let me see what I got. I got out my tin of warm reds. M. Graham never dries. This one is a mess. So let's just go. Let's just pick this. Uh, da Vinci Cad Red Light. And that works for me. Um, for those of you who don't know, Da Vinci is a U.S. company founded from an Italian paint maker's. Um, we will call it um, lineage. There you go. Their paints are very high quality, and they come in a larger tube, and they are um, very, very nice paints. So there you go. There you go. You got it. All right. I'm using Daniel Smith Moon Glow as a dark blue, because it's got a little purplish cast. Daniel Smith Cobalt Turquoise. <clears throat> um, transparent Red Oxide. Indian Red, that's Indian Red, there's the Oxide. Uh, red Fuchsite, which is here, and I just wrote down the Cad Red Light. So there are my colors. I think I named them all, maybe I didn't. Okay, so we've got Windsor Newton Manganese, that's here, kind of a bluish. We've got Windsor Newton Blue, Windsor Blue. Um, which I think is their ultramarine, and then the Da Vinci Red. I'm using my uh, my inexpensive watercolor brush, this Low Canal 7020 Ultra Round. Had it 20 years, and I was going to use some. Uh, <clears throat> Woad, W-O-A-D. This, like I mentioned yesterday, is kind of modeled after <clears throat> Jean Haynes from England. I love her work. Um, she has spent years, years, years doing her technique and learning it and it's uh, you can't do what she does without that effort so she also works on a dry paper and that's the pigments do the traveling. And you can keep putting stronger color up there. Just let it go. And now I'm going to get a little bit of moon glow, which is kind of all mixed in. Daniel Smith colors are harder to 
get wet mainly because they are hard stone pigments just kind of let those colors do what they want to do and now I'm going to go some I'll try to put little spots of it on each side. And here's my manganese. Now what this does is it gives those pigments a chance to play. See how that does right there? It just pushes it out of the way. Now let's do some teal. start with the dark and see what they do with the blues This is the fun of learning to let colors do their own thing. And what I'm trying to do here is get some stronger colors. Adding some moon glow with that.
one of the things Jean suggests is just cutting that paper this size or you know even she likes bigger paper for this And just doing a practice like this every day. And then I have taken these before and used them as a background for something completely unrelated. This is where it's nice to have a brush that can hold a whole lot of water. Now if you see some spots you're still wet, see my paper is still really shiny and if I want to go back and add a little darker color let it go both ways. Just play with the pigment.
Moon Glow turned out to be an excellent choice. Try to let the pigments mix on their own. Guess where I am? <laughs> Good luck with that, Pops. Trying to make some, um, not trying, making some lighter spots. I'm going to let this start to lay flat now. It's a fairly dry brush, and I'll just pick up the pigment just to make some sky holes. And for, looks like two fingerprints. I'm using my unbleached cotton diaper from... <laughs> Amazon and I've had to wash them several times to get them really absorbent. Don't stress over where this stuff is because you'll have a chance to go back in and tighten it up. Kind of trying to get all the light 
or the white of the paper. You can tell how wet the paper is because I can get the holes real good and then they close back up. That's okay. This is part of the sonambulant value. I didn't say that right. Sonambulant. Part of watercolor. Put it on. Take it off. That's the same in any medium. Watch for hard lines. Now we're going to start getting puddles. So I'm going to back off. I mean, not puddles. We're getting um, blooms. Alrighty, I'm going to let this sit until I'm happy with the way it looks. The colors are still going to mingle and push the way, and somebody's calling me. Wasn't the one I expected. Sorry about that. So the colors, the pigments are different sized granules, the little t 90 things you can hardly see. And they push each other out of the way and they mingle and they make odd, uh, odd new colors like here. You can't mix those. Look at this. It's got a purplish cast to it. Neutrals are yummy. All right, I'll be back in a bit. I've added a few more colors for my painting. I've added Peacock by Holbein. And on the orange side, I added Daniel Smith Perline. Windsor Yellow Deep and Windsor Burnt Sienna because I need to get some brighter colors in here. So here we go. Generously load some water. Do 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 do. Wait for them to load up. Again, this little painting is after Jean Haynes, and I will have a picture of it in the upper right corner or one of the corners, anyway. Thank you. 
I also think I see some burnt umber, which is a cooler brown. And I would be right. Two, three. See how easy this is? M. gram sepia. And that is also a cool brown. This is the way I pick my colors. I don't go by... <clears throat> It's, it's weird. I don't... I go by what the pigment looks like. And I have a mixture of warm and cool colors. Now, orange is going to be really hot, but that's okay. Let's see what else I've got. That's going to be perfect. A little bit of that. A little bit of that. Oops. Whoops. <laughs> Oopsie daisy. And a little bit of that. And I'm going to start with a little bit of the blue. Because I want some more vibrant color and I'm going to spray that a little bit I wonder what I did with my spray bottle oh there it is we'll just use Mr. Tim now I sprayed that because the paper was dry and I want these edges to just disappear off into nothing. And that will also help with adding a little bit of brightness. I got this color a long time ago because Tom Lynch said it was his one of his favorite punch colors. And of course never have used it very much. Alright, that looks much better. Now let's put a little bit of this burnt sienna. I'm going to mix a little bit of perline in there. And see, just brighten that right on up. See how bright that is? And pretty. Let's see, I need a little bit of that right up in here. Okay, make sure you don't have any hard edges.
Now I am just going to, this is the Indian yellow. Windsor Newton yellow ochre or, or yellow. I don't know. It's got OR on it. Now ochres are a little bit opaque. All I'm trying to do right now is provide a base. If I need brighter yellow, mellow yellow. This is cad yellow. That's something that tends toward orange. So let's go with Daniel Smith Permanent Yellow Deep. A little bit dirty water there never hurt anybody. just playing okay I dipped into that orange straight because the colors underneath it will tone it down Got some really dark areas up in here. Painting what could be some branches, and I'm gonna pop some peacock blue in amongst that dark. No hard edges. Anytime you want it to thin a little bit, this method of working is. Um, perfect for people like me who want to have a have control over what they're doing and I need I need I need just wipe the edge like that the water will fill it back in but I want to show you something here there's not a green on my palette, but look at that beautiful green. And the reason is because it's mixed with two of the colors I did pick. So that green is not obnoxious, it's just natural. I 
and Lord knows I would love to be able to paint like Jean, but and Jean's been doing Jean for a lot of years. She didn't she didn't just pick up a brush and start painting. Ooh, that's so pretty. Watch for dark edges. If you need to take your designated rag. We're getting some good Keep the edge. So what will happen on that edge is as this starts to dry, this has a lot of water and it will push back up into the dry area. So that's why you want to pay attention to your edges. The other thing I can do is put that on a slant. This is the burnt sienna. There are no rules. You do the same thing when you're working in oils or pastels, soft pastels. You leave your hard edges to the end. Keep everything very soft up till then. I was reading an article the other day, I think I mentioned it, about John Singer Sargent. And of course he was famed for his portraits, but his favorite thing to do was watercolor. And landscapes and painting plein air. And every chance he got, that's what he would do. And he got... Four paintings, I believe it was, entered into a Royal Watercolor Exhibition. And now the British watercolorists are extremely picky about their rules. That it can only be transparent watercolor or it can't play in their shows. Well, his paintings arrived. And lo and behold... They were everything. They were all kinds of water media. Um, acrylics didn't exist then, but he had plenty of gouache. Anytime he needed to add some lightness or something, he'd pull out whatever he needed to make the statement he wanted to make. So those paintings were not well received. So, I just said that to say, when you look at his paintings, and I'm not going to presume to compare this method with anything he did, but we're not entering the Royal Watercolor Society. Some of you may be, but not to me. Now some of these are so light, they're just going to barely lighten what's under them. And we're going to get some beautiful
I'm doing a little bit of negative painting here and there and that means painting the background and leaving a dark area to be a stem. Every painting goes through an intermediate stage where if you're a beginner you will give it up. You will tear it up, throw it in the trash. But after you've done a mile of canvases you'll realize that that's a growing phase. And you are real close at that point to its final look. So don't quit. and connect a few of those spots. They're going to go, what color did she use? Ask her. Because she won't know. Alright, now then we're going to see if we can pull this all together. Maybe we can, and maybe we can't, but here we go. Those of you who have been watching me a while are going to think, where did all those colors come from? I've been using these colors on this palette for a long time. I don't like to mix my colors totally on my on my palette 
So I've got a little bit of my whitish mixture and a little bit of the darker orange mixture, and I like that. Choking way back on my brush because I just want it to dance a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to soften some edges. It's me. <laughs> Ooh wee, my water is dirty. I just have to get water from the top. I'm looking for a blue. And that's not far from what I'm wanting. Let's try. Like this one or this one. There it is, peacock. Holbein peacock. going to use this for my for my palette. I want to mix up a little bit. Activate. It's a better word. Okay. And peacock is Holbein. Now I'm trying, the, I'm experimenting. Um, incidentally, everything art is about experimenting. So my experiment right here has to do with glazing over wash. They're both water media, so that I 
it's not like we're mixing oil and acrylic or going to brighten it up just a little. Remember I told you the other day about John Singer Sargent. Using whatever he had at hand to make his painting look like he wanted it to. Now then, brighter already. And that was the peacock. I'm just blotting some of the orange. What is that right there? Ooh. -wee. First, I'm going to see if I can lift it, and I think I'm going to be able to. Yeah. Okay, to lift, get a wet brush, shake it, and then touch the areas that you want to soften. And leave it alone. Clean your brush, shake it, and dry it, squeeze it, you know, squeeze it. And then let that dry-ish brush go in there and pick that up. And if I can't get it back light enough to put some blue on it, I'll get the white wash out. Don't be scared of watercolor. Learn your basics, which is about the paper and the quality of the brushes. And this is a mixture, synthetic and... Kolinsky. So you don't want to scrub it because you'll wear your brush out. A good watercolor brush will last you your entire career if you treat it right. I use inexpensive craft watercolor brushes for acrylic because basically with acrylic all you're doing is just scooping up paint and moving it to your canvas. But with watercolor, the brush actually plays a role. In how the pigments mix on the paper. And the reason you need good watercolor brushes I've told you all this many times, you're probably sick of hearing it. It's because the belly of the brush is designed, and most of these are made by hand, it's designed to hold a lot of water and pigment. And then how sharp it comes to a point is where the real quality of the brush comes in. So if you're painting a smallish line, the belly of that brush will hold pigment for a long way, which means you don't have to stop and put it back in the water.
I've been wanting to get back to this little painting. This is after Jean Haynes, which is what you do when you're copying or attempting or using as a reference somebody else's work. After. And that's in the title. Because you don't want anybody to think, least of all her, that you're using her work without attribution. After all, the old masters began their journeys as artists. Now let's see if this blue shows up. Their journeys as apprentices they copied the master that they were apprenticed to. Then we'll soften a few edges, same way. This is my 100% bird's eye, 100% all natural diaper. Amazon and they are in my store. And remember that we can always, oops, I see some more holes that I need. And then when these get, get dirty, I just throw them in the washer with darks. Wash them up, then I've got them. With cellulose paper, which is most of your craft papers, any kind of lifting is verboten because what happens is that you the paper will peel, you know, like an old sweater does, where a good quality watercolor paper has sizing in it to keep it from doing that so much. I like Fabriano, Artistico, which is their top of the line. And it's not that expensive. You can buy a sheet for full size sheet for uh, it fluctuates all the time, but somewhere between four and five dollars or three and four. And then you can cut that twenty two by thirty inch sheet of paper down into a smaller size. These this one happens to be from Jerry's Artorama, but they've been out of stock on it. It's still listed in their catalog, which makes me think it will someday come back. And when it does come back, I order there's four packs for four sheets this size for three dollars. And I just ordered an even dozen while they've got them in stock. I could have done this earlier with masking fluid and then I didn't have to worry about these spots. <clears throat> I'm not a fan of masking fluid because it creates other issues. For example, you've got to go over each of those areas where masking fluid was and soften because you get a real hard edge and to me this is fun
especially since that turned out so good. And I don't care who you are. You're going to have cases where you've carried a color too far. The other thing that I think you should be aware of is that I rarely finish a painting in one sitting. And I may have four or five going at once. <clears throat> but the reason for that, or one of the reasons for that, is that when you haven't looked at it in a week or so, you come back to it with fresh eyes. Especially as a beginner, your first paintings you might get 40% of happy, and it takes the proverbial one mile of canvas or paper to get where you can get 70% of happy with each painting. And if you can get to 90%, you're pretty you're pretty good. So rem remember that this is a journey you're on. There is no Martha Stewart box of cookie recipe that you buy and make perfect cookies the first time. This requires skill, it requires practice, both of which can be learned. The skill can be learned. The practice is where most people fall down. They don't want to do it. For example, they want to jump right into color the first time they pick up a brush. When in essence, the best thing to do is learn to paint in values just using black and white. But we're an instant society. We want, we want what we want, and we want it now. You want know, to have something in two hours that you can sign and hang on the wall. Which is, I mean, that, be honest with you, that's one of the reasons that I like mixed media. You can, you can play in a journal and finish it couple hours. Once you learn the basics of say value black and white, then those basics will apply to every medium. Doesn't matter what the medium is. Oil, encaustic, Soft pastel, watercolor, they're all the same. I mean, the same rules apply for composition and color mixing. And the only thing that's different is learning how each one, the individual medium itself, how oils are finicky where watercolors aren't, or where watercolors are finicky and oils aren't. So you just add that little bit, and you're good to go.
forgot where I was. Now, if y'all follow me any length of time at all, you know at some point I'm going to look at this and go, I'm getting the gouache out. Because that's what I do. The thing about it is that the gouache is opaque unless you thin it way down. But you want it to be opaque if you're using it for this. If you make a sky hole that's too big, then you can go back and paint over it. And you'll have a bunch of nice soft edges. Of course, y'all know you can fast forward your YouTube videos if you don't want to watch all this, and I don't blame you. But if you put it on fast forward, you can pick back up when I stop. And just as sure as I turn my camera off and come back, voila, somebody's going to say, I, I didn't get that. Why didn't you put the original up? I wanted to watch all of it. I also think it's a good idea to give you a concept of how how much time goes into making a real painting. Now consider this a real painting. It could be a study for a larger painting, um, but I wouldn't copy Jean on a larger. Anything that you want to sell, you might think twice about it. coming up. And that was part of the spot that I cleaned to begin with. And I'm pulling some of the dark blue back. And of course the beautiful grays that we're getting 
neutrals is what I like to call them. Is because blue and orange are <coughs> opposites <coughs> on the color wheel, which means they, in a manner of speaking, fight each other, cancel each other out. But that makes beautiful neutrals. And guess what? Without the bright colors, I mean, without the neutrals, the bright colors don't have enough to play off of. So if you make a painting that's all bright, nothing stands out. You add some neutrals, and all of a sudden you've got a popper. don't think that Jean uses body color, which is another name for gouache. She might. Even old Charles Reed, bless his heart, carried a little container of white gouache. I mean, you think you're leaving your whites for highlights, but Sometimes it's not there when you think it should be. And it's not cheating. At all. Okay, how are we doing here? You know that beautiful green? I wish I had that back. I think 
I can work with that. Let's see what happens. Thin blue. Okay, I'm going to have to... The blue doesn't cover the orange. I mean, let that sit there for a minute and see if any of it lifts. I'm doing a negative painting where I think there would be branches. It's where you paint around me out. I just sprayed down some white that I had in here. Doesn't matter if it's got a little pink in it. In fact, I think that's probably pretty good. Add some of this blue. I think lifting some of it first was probably a good idea. Okay, I want lighter here.
Now remember this is going to dry a whole lot lighter. Now I'm going to put a little watercolor in with that and tone it down, but it also gives me a lighter color. I want a little bit of pink. Soften. Try not to do that. Just what I just did was scrub a little with this brush. I'm just dancing. I don't necessarily want to cover all of it. And some of these spots are really dark.
I got a fly in here with me. Okay. Put that up. Okay, now I am going to turn you off while I dry it. Alrighty, we're fairly dry. I did just a little bit more over here. Not, not much, not that you would notice. Now I need a really dark brown. And I think I'm going to put cad bread with this thala over here. Might as well max use the peacock too. Now he needs a little more red. Now this color picks up what's going on in the oranges. So I think that's a pretty good color. Add a little more water. Clean the brush. Shake the brush. Now then. Let's start at the top. Put in some faint lines. And we need a little bit more red for some of these. Now have Jean's picture. I think I can do that. I may just drop her an email and make sure that she's okay with that. Now this will push a lot of that white that I patched with back to the background. And I need some more paint.
Well, the fuzzier you make your edges, the further back it goes. So we don't want these to look like they're coming from the top. See, there's a pretty good one right there. Just add a little bit. And some of these little branches will come on top. Some are a little bit bigger. And I did, I brought out my in honor of Jean Haynes, her uh, I forgot what she calls it, liner. Makes real thin rigor. Makes real good lines. When you're doing lines, you do not have to do the whole line. You can skip. And that is, some of these are lighter. So I'm going to come back over to my gouache. And I will make sure that I clean this brush immediately. Water. It's also a good idea to come back on the brush. You hold it back here. And I don't want to block part of that because that's part of the fuzzy.
This is also a cool brown because of the blue in it. Which means that it also will recede because of that. Go behind some and on top of some. If you see a shape that looks like a leaf, then paint around it. What's up? Little blend going on in here, so I'm gonna wet that just a little. And let that paint make its own mark. These brushes are from Rosemary and Company. And they are exquisite. All right, now let's see what we can get into up here. I'm adding a little bit of gouache. It's a rosy pink. And I think I am switch back to my I'll put a few little highlights. Marking where the light would hit these. I 
And I want a brighter. Don't want to overdo this part. Remember, I teach what I most need to learn, or what I most need to remind myself of. Just a few little Okay, now I'm going to look and see if I've got any hard edges in these sky holes. Just a little dance. Pushing them to the back. Hiding a few things. Pulling a few more out. How about that's perfect? It's a little lemon yellow cad red. The sugar makes the medicine go down. I think I'm going to quit. Maybe just one more leaf. Hold it up and see. I want to see it close up too. Doesn't turn out too bad, too bad, not at all. See one thing. Put a few.
few little marks. Kind of connect some of these. I'm so sorry. See it? Still can't see it. Alright, that is for sure done now. I'll come back tomorrow after it's all dry and take another look at it. Let's see if I can kill some of these lights. There, that's better. Alrighty, that's it. Bye.